What's up everybody, back on the Shadowlands beta with some more raid testing for you. So today we're taking a look at Huntsman Altimore in the new raid Castle Nathria. Before we start I just want to point out that this is very early beta so a lot of things will change so this is by no means a guide on how to and probably not how the encounter will end up once this goes live. And lastly due to it being beta there's a lot of bugs, a lot of lag and can be some weird stuff going on. During this encounter you will face off against the Huntman Altimore and one of his doggos at a time. When one doggo is defeated, a new one will come out until all three of his doggos are defeated. Each one has his own set of abilities and the huntsman and the doggos shares damage taken. Not health, but any damage dealt to either him or one of his adds is taken by both. Altimore has his own set of abilities, which is Sin Seeker and Spreadshot. Sin Seeker marks three players and fires at them. Anyone between the marked targets and the boss will also be hit by this. Each bolt inflicts a large amount of physical damage and leaves a bleed dot for 30 seconds that deals a moderate amount of damage every two sec. The next one out is Spread Shot. Just your generic cone ability, Altimore fires a cone of bolts at players, seems to just target a random player, deals a bit of damage to anyone hit, didn't seem like anything major from testing at least, but tuning can change that. And Altimore will be using these abilities throughout the fight. Now on to the doggos. First doggo out is Margor uses a stacking tank bleed called Jagger Claws, chunks a fair amount of your HP as a tank, then applies a stacking bleed that lasts for 30 sec. You could remove this bleed by using Blessing or Protection, Divine Shield, and I assume the Kyrian Signature ability as well, the vial that takes away bleeds. Next one out is Bloody Thrash. Targets a random player, this player gets a 6 yard circle around him, and after 8 seconds Margor jumps over dealing lethal damage split among players hit. This also leaves a nasty bleed that lasts for 6 seconds. At the moment it was immunable, which I hope it won't be once it goes live. It also seemed like if you immuned it, no one else took damage from it. So if I used Blessing or Protection on the player who got targeted by this, they did not need to move from the raid if anyone was near. But I'm going to assume that's not intended, or at least hope this isn't going to be another immune raid. Cause so far there's a lot of mechanics that are cheesable with immunes in this raid. Anyways, next doggo out is Bargast, uses Rip Soul and Shades of Bargast. So this dog will every now and then rip out the soul of its current tank, dealing a ton of shadow damage and causes a soul to appear, that will wander towards Altimore. If the soul reaches him, he will consume it and all his damage done is increased by 200%. And as long as the soul persists, it will deal ticking shadow damage to everyone in the raid. To avoid this, the soul needs to be healed up, and its health is equal to the tank's health percentage after rip soul. So if tank goes down to 10%, the soul spawns on 10% and you'll need a lot of healing to top it. Again, and I'm not sure if it's intended, if tank takes no damage at all, soul spawns at 100% and despawns. If immune, it doesn't spawn a soul at all. And again, I hope at least the immunity part doesn't stay because it's more fun as a tank to manage cooldowns to get it spawn as close to 100% as possible instead of just immune lol and I skip the mechanic. It's probably more fun for healers to have to deal with this actual mechanic as well. Next out is Shades of Bargast. He creates shades of himself that cast Deathly Roar. This deals raid-wide damage and leaves a dot. However, these ads can be CC'd with pretty much any and all crowd controls, and anytime you CC them they take 100% increased damage and this stacks. This also stacks by itself if you just leave them CC'd, so if say a druid hibernates one of them, you can leave him like that and it will keep stacking. However, when the shades reach 100 energy they become immune to CC, which not only means you can't stack more damage increase on them, but you effectively cannot interrupt this roar anymore. But once they hit around 40 stacks of 100% increased damage taken, they kinda just melt. But again, we'll see what tuning does to this. Next out is Hecutes. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hecutes uses Crushing Stone and Petrifying Howl. Crushing Stone is the tank mechanic for this ad. Each time it melee attacks, his physical damage is increased by 25%, and his movement speed is reduced. When Hecutes moves, he sheds stacks of Crushing Stone and deals nature damage to everyone in the raid. He will also use Petrifying Howl, which petrifies players, inflicting nature damage and reduces movement speed by 5% every one sec. When this expires, the petrified players deal some nature 
creature damage to anyone within 10 yards and creates a patch of stone shards at their location. Step into one of these patches and your movement speed is reduced by 25% and you take some damn damn. And that's pretty much it. All in all, I gotta say Huntsman Ultimore seems like a decent early boss, nothing overly complicated about it, and I do enjoy fights that change and or gets progressively harder over the course of the encounter. New doggos means new abilities and new overlaps to deal with, so not just a repeat for 5 minutes and you're done. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Make sure to check out my Patreon and join my stanky discord. It also seems like my good internet will finally be arriving very shortly, which means I'll also be streaming a lot of testing during beta as well as when I raid on retail. So don't forget to check me out on Twitch. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.